recording. All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this year's Civic Innovation Lightning Talks. Um, it's so great to see everybody here today. Uh, my name is Ones James, and I majored in environmental science at LaGuardia Community College, from where I will be graduating this month. Uh, last year, I met Noelle at LaGuardia's Tech Scholars Program and eventually uh, navigated my way into the Civic Innovation Fellowship Program through CUNY Service Corps. All right, let's just try and get started now. Okay. All right, so this program uh, exposes fellows to all the basics of understanding and working with data, specifically New York City open data and analytic software, which include Google Sheets, Excel, ArcGIS Online for developers, QGIS, and RStudio. These help to make sense of the data and derive key useful insights to help the city run better, while fellows were exposed to public speaking and working in a government office. In the spring semester, we work on real world projects from the borough president's office, community boards, and nonprofits, and even individuals. These are called RADARs or radars, research and data assistance requests, which you'll hear more about in just a minute. Right. Hi, that's me. Uh, as a graduate from this fellowship program, I hope to meld my academic knowledge with the new skills and experiences gained through Beta NYC in my career as I continue to expand my knowledge in environment, data analysis, and GIS. Uh, as we continue, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, for some of you, it might be on the top right corner uh, for any questions or uh, for any questions you might have uh, further along. And now it's my honor to introduce the incredible Chief of Staff to the Office of Manhattan Borough President Gail A. Brewer, Jessica Meeks. She provides invaluable support to both Beta NYC and her entire staff as she keeps everyone informed, comfortable, and on track, especially in the midst of recent major shifts and difficult current events. Jessica, you have the floor. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this great event and congratulations to all the fellows. What an amazing, interesting and crazy year this has been, huh? Um, this was uh, this year, I think, presented challenges that none of us ever imagined that we would have um, to suddenly, you know, have to change everything about our lives and stay in our houses and really depend on technology in a whole new way. And um, it was so wonderful to work with Beta NYC as we've been doing for six years now, um, because they, as usual, Beta NYC has helped us along um, and helped our office in every aspect of what we do. And um, of course, the big piece of that is the Civic Innovation Fellows, which is you. Um, this is our sixth year with the Civic Innovation Fellows in partnership with Beta NYC. And it has been such a tremendous experience for us in the office, for all of our staff and for the borough president herself. Um, we've learned a lot and um, we have, um, you guys have all done such amazing work. I just have to say that, you know, I know that there's 59 alumni from the Civic Innovation Fellows and there's, you know, about half of them are women. So many are um, immigrants, first, second generation, people of color. I mean, it's just an amazing, wonderful group of alumni, including you now. Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, the tools and the things that you, that the alumni in general have worked on have been just phenomenal. I mean, from board stat, where, where boards can actually see the, in detail what's going on in the neighborhoods, um, to actually working with our community boards, which are such an important part of what we do, um, helping them with databases and to find information. It's just been absolutely incredible. Um, and then some other tools, I feel like every time we say that there's some issue, um, Civic Innovation Fellows are jumping right in with Beta NYC and solving our problem. So things like SLAM, which you know helps us figure out what's going on with liquor licenses and see all the information. Um, the boundary map, which is so incredible all the time. People are like, well, I live in this community board and I don't know the police precinct or the this and the that. And then we have this wonderful tool, boundary map. 
um, the tenants uh, information. I mean, there's such great stuff. But I have to say this year, um, with all of um, the Civic Innovation Fellows who are working this year, um, we really threw a lot of hard um, things at you. And I know I suddenly realized, Emily um, helped me realize that I could make some data requests and that um, you all would figure out how to, how to answer the questions that I had and provide the data. And um, I came up with some pretty hard ones, I have to say. Sometimes it's easy. It's just like, oh, can you find a list of you know, these programs or something? But then I would always have things like, well, but what about the ridership on these trains at these stations at these times? Or I would say, well, how about, I need to find out these programs that are funded by this agency, but not that agency. I mean, I, I put out some pretty hard stuff, I think. And um, always, always got amazing results. And so I know, I think that's called radar now is the, is the mechanism by now where, where, we, uh, where we get great information on all of the requests that we put out. And for our office, that has been just invaluable. I mean, and I, I know I personally put out a lot of requests, but you've also worked with our budget unit, our community affairs unit, our deputy um, our president's um, policy, certainly a lot of work with policy. So um, all of the work it is really, the work that you have done, the work that uh, Civic Innovation Fellows and Beta NYC has done in our office has really made our work so much better and has made the borough president be able to do so much more. So I wanted to just sort of kick this off by thanking you so much, congratulating you on the amazing work that you've done in this very, very difficult year. And I look forward to the rest of the program today. So thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you so much, Jessica. Now turning to the talks. Uh, these, these are all the years of the fellows in this office and with Beta NYC. And here are the 2019-2020 fellows and their various projects, which we'll be highlighting tonight. Now to begin our lightning talks, I'd like to welcome Ishra Chaudhuri a recent graduate from Queens College majoring in computer science who has served as a fellow and a mentor for the CIF program. Take it away, Ishrat. Thank you for your introduction, Anaj. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well, and thank you for joining us this evening. Um, since you've already heard a lot about radar, 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 so we would like to give you some um, context on what actually radar is and how it came to be itself. You can go to the next slide. Um, so give, to give a little context, Beta NYC, as you heard from Jessica, we are situated in the MBPO's office. And so Borough President Gail Brewer played a pivotal role in passing the 2012 Open Data Law. And, and as a result of that, we have NYC Open Data, which has now 2,868 data sets, which is a huge amount of data. So as we progressed um, with Beta NYC, we realized that borough president's office and community boards often have technical challenges without a staff to address them fully. Um, you can go to the next slide, thanks. Um, so we started getting requests from the MBPO and other community boards with data assistance and it transformed into making maps, building products. Just like Jessica was mentioning, boards that was one of our earlier products and which, is, which was a direct request from Gil Brewer. And it turned out to be a product that fellows worked on for a while. So we introduced this system called RADA, Research and Data Assistance Request, in order to keep track of all the requests that we've been getting and to help anyone who needs assistance in that way. Since we are also running our Civic Innovation Fellowship Program, we thought our fellows can really help any sort of request that we are getting. And since they are part of Beta NYC and they're here to get some um, hands-on professional experience, this would be a great way for them to do real impactful projects of their own. In the summer of 2018, we launched this out of necessity. And since then, we have processed over 40 requests and you will hear about two of our radars this evening. Next slide. So the impact of radar was uh, pretty big. Um, as I just mentioned before, we addressed over more than 20, 40 radars. We have built maps, different tools, applications like SLAM, BoardStat, various reports, as Jessica mentioned about ridership data, and also products. And we, we were able to help the MVPO, various nonprofit organizations, community boards, and the broader NYC community. Next slide. 
So we have our radar gallery in our website and you could definitely check out all the wonderful projects our fellows have been working on. And we would definitely welcome any requests that have to do with NYC's recovery moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ishra. Now we have uh, Stephanie Levitt, who has one more year at City Tech, and she's uh, majoring in applied mathematics. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, Anej, and thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, before I get started and start this clock, I'd just like to mention that this project is a collaboration of three fellows. Uh, my two colleagues unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. That's Nikki Praskak, who goes to John Jay, and Amin Alhubashi, who, like Anej, goes to LaGuardia Community College. I'd also like to thank the mentorship of Ishrat, Emily, and Z, and as always, the support of Kate and Noel in our endeavors. Okay, uh, so if you'll forgive me, I'm working off notes and a stopwatch here, two things this extemporaneous speaker never uses. Okay, so this project is tied to a direct government, more demographically representative of the communities that it represents. Fundamentally, it's about transparency, mindfulness, and intentional actions to foster equity and addressing community priorities. You may be asking, what is a community board? Well, a full board is comprised of 50 members, a mix of appointments and nominations that ideally reflects the diversity of the stakeholders in the community. They do many, many things, but uh, one key responsibility is they liaise with city agencies on service issues, and they define and advance the district's annual priorities. They report into the borough president's office, who this project is for. Um, there are 12 community districts and therefore community boards in Manhattan and they're 59 citywide. So how do we plan to foster such equity? Well, first it's to enable transparency through data analysis, then to highlight and quantify inequities, and then to facilitate the means of addressing it. Next slide, please. So here it is, it is a prototype. Um, and I want to give a little bit of a history on this project. So this has evolved from the fall capstone that all of the nine fellows in the cohort worked on, which is essentially a know your district. So in December, we presented our um, data analysis, visualizations, storytelling and mapping skills to the Manhattan Borough President's office working from census data and appointments application data uh, from the MBPO. Uh, it is um, a challenge for the MVPO to use this in a meaningful way in that all of the district and community board information exists essentially in one of 12 silos. Thus, here we are with a new tool to facilitate the equity process. So uh, this prototype is using the story map feature of ArcGIS Online. So it enables us new ways to present data visualizations uh, to introduce an element of storytelling, but also gives us the interactivity uh, that's missing in a PowerPoint deck through customizable maps. It is user-friendly. It functions as an internal facing repository, but uh, it may down the line be public facing. Next slide, please. So um, what's inside? Lots and lots and lots of data visualizations. Uh, the key takeaway here is that this analysis no longer um, exists in silos. So on the one hand, we introduced macro level analysis, which you'll see on the left, where we compared the borough of Manhattan to all of the community boards collectively. Uh, on the other hand, we did a side by side analysis of all 12 community boards, which you'll see at the right. And you can do sort of a one to one comparison because we have all 12 CBs on one slide and all 12 CDs community districts on another. Um, so it gives you a sense of sort of the overall um, and a little more granular. Uh, we looked at several vectors of self reported identity, uh, race and ethnicity, age, gender identity, educational attainment and housing type again from census data and uh, application data for the appointment. Um, we in our storytelling, let the data speak for itself, but we also guided an understanding of the, some of the larger issues through analysis accompanying the visualizations. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please, Anish, thank you. Um, in addition to all of the above, 
we developed uh, one data visualization in particular as a template for all 12 of the community board district pairings, where we specifically highlighted racial and ethnic disparities in board membership versus the district population. Um, we refer to this lovingly as the plus minus graph, but you can think of it as like a, a surplus and a shortfall. Um, and next slide, please. And so what's next? Uh, we are working towards version 2.0. We will do that with some more user research and then we will iterate. Uh, we would love to make this process a bit less cumbersome. So in the fall, we use an R script, but for a lot of this new analysis, it was slicing and dicing and visualizations and pivot tables and Google Sheets. If there are any R ninjas in the audience that want to volunteer their time to rewrite a script, let us know. Um, we would like to do a bit of a longitudinal analysis now that we have three years worth of data to see if there's been any improvement over the short period of time. And then ultimately we would like to go wide. We'd like to streamline and share this process and this tool with all of the borough presidents so that we can align the process across New York City. Boom, under five minutes. And I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, now I, <laughs> now I will, uh, I am going to take you through the religious facility story map. Uh, that was a project that I worked on uh, originally. In the original analysis, there were other contributors. Um, we had Mohammed and C and Amin for a bit. Um, I think about at least half of the fellows have had a hand in the original analysis that led to this religious facility story map. Okay, so what's the problem? Um, Manhattan's religious facilities, or as we like to refer to them, RFs, are disappearing and they're susceptible to condo and commercial development. Uh, MBPO has studied the phenomenon and realized that there was a decline. And as such, uh, we realized that the religious facilities' weaknesses were being exploited, uh, but there was a lack of data regarding the reasons behind it and how they can combat, uh, how they can con combat this problem. Um, also, observation shows that you know, there's been changing community demographics and reduced membership, which usually leads to an inability to maintain the facilities, which actually have been also leading to that decline. Okay. All right. So the solution was to gather all the religious facility data that we could uh, from open source data. Uh, we gathered data regarding lot size, location, ownership, historical and landmark status, proximity to other lots of interest, zoning, land use, liens, and use designation, designation changes over the last 10 years. Uh, we decided to analyze this data. We used a lot of, uh, there was a lot of Excel and uh, pivot tables of pivot tables involved in, in gathering and analyzing this information. And what, how the process evolved was the MBPO land use team uh, submitted the original radar and the data that we analyzed is what they use to create uh, more questions to bring back to us um, on what was needed to address the situation. And it snowballed from there. The Religious Facilities Task Force was then created and became, they became involved. And eventually the NYU Wagner team joined the conversation and used it as a project uh, to delve deeper into this issue and to see how they can, how they could address these, address it and try to attempt to solve the problem. There was a lot of field work and crowdsourcing involved. 
uh, a lot of task force meetings, and a lot of questions that needed answers. And eventually the NYU Wagner team uh, ended up creating an action book for religious facilities so that they could could help them combat the weaknesses that they were experiencing. And that's moving on. I we then used that information that we gathered because some of it was sensitive data. We couldn't all we couldn't use all of it, but we wanted to use we wanted to put it on a platform where it was available to the public and to stakeholders uh, of religious facilities, friends uh, of religious facilities, and you know, there's just the general public and communities in Manhattan as well. And we wanted just to streamline that information so that everybody could understand what was going on and they can join the, the conversation and perhaps be a part of the solution. So we created a story map. Um, as was mentioned before, story map is an RGIS online platform that is used. Um, it's a visualization tool used to uh, bring, bring data and storytelling together. And that's what we attempted to do with this story map. I am going to give you a brief demo of this story map in just a second. So, okay. And let me just give you, we're gonna do just that. All right. Here we go. Here is the religious facility story map. And uh, we just wanted to highlight a few things. First and foremost, um, the fact that these religious facilities are a cornerstone of Manhattan culture and heritage and history and also kind of highlight that there is a significant decline over the last 10 years, something that can't be ignored. And we are losing these cornerstones of our communities uh, pretty fast. And there isn't a lot that, is, that can be, that they think that could be done about it. So we just want to bring, uh, bring that to the forefront, especially in an area where, at a time where real estate development is approximately $1,700 a square foot uh, for cost right now. Um, only a small portion of these facilities are protected as can be seen here. All the red dots are the religious facilities distributed in Manhattan and the blue dots are uh, all the protected zones. Here is gives you a better understanding of what these protections are and what are unprotected. Um, we try to make everything as interactive as possible so that, you know, the public could have fun with the information as well. Um, we also wanted to highlight a few communities that had uh, unique problems uh, that needed to be addressed. And we highlighted um, Harlem and the Lower East Side and we also wanted to bring to the attention the why they're being lost, how they're being lost, sorry. Uh, over the last 10 years, you know, 27 were converted to condo use. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of them are being sold for residential and other commercial use. Some are just being, you know, standing there as vacant lots. There are reasons for this and even though we have been able to identify these reasons, we cannot highlight everything in the story map, but it would be covered in the, the, in the action book that was created by MBPO and the Religious Facilities Task Force in, 
addition to the NYU Wagner team. And that book is called Religious Congregations in Manhattan, an action book for religious organization. I'm just going to stop that. Sorry. All right, and here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, and the impact. The impact is we now have an action book with all this information that is ready for these religious facilities to reference, and now faith-based leaders from over 40 different of these facilities are aware of the issue and they're aware that there is guidance available so we can find the right path forward uh, beyond this. Okay, and that was uh, the religious facility story map. Next is I'd like to move on to Gabrielle Langston. She's this year's valedictorian at CUNY majoring in, in mathematics and graduating from C City Tech. Thank you, Gabby. Uh, you can go ahead. Okay. Oh, hi, Inej. Thank you for the introduction and good evening, everyone. It's, it's nice to see all of you. Um, so as Inej said, my name is Gabrielle Langston and I'm here today to talk about um, School of Data. Okay. Our next slide, please. Okay, so as most of you probably already know, School of Data is an annual civic tech gathering that we hold during Open Data Week. And, you know, each year we strive to make School of Data and the civic tech community to be more diverse and more inclusive. And in order to do so, we always want to take into consideration, you know, race and ethnicity, you know, gender identification, you know, age ranges, you know, people with disabilities, or even mothers and single mothers, among many, many other things. Um, but up until recently, you know, we didn't track the attendee demographics in these events. As a result, we weren't really too sure about how to measure the um, diversity in the event. And so bearing all that in mind, you know, we want to create a target outreach to see how we can continue to make this awesome event, you know, even more successful and more diverse for the future years. Our next slide, please. Okay, so this is like a general process of how we went into analyzing School of Data for this year. Um, so we created a questionnaire um, via Eventbrite in order to capture all the um, de demographic information of our registrants at the time of registration. And then afterwards, after School of Data, what we did is that we extracted um, that information from Eventbrite, and that was in the form of like Excel spreadsheets and various interfaces on Eventbrite. Um, we then analyzed those results and used those findings to um, publish a blog post. And ultimately, our main goal, we wanted to tell a story about what happened in this year's conference. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so speaking about extracting and analyzing results, I want to go into just a little bit specifically exactly how we did that. So there are two broad categories that we wanted to consider. So the first was registration and ticket sales. So we considered, you know, traffic going to Eventbrite, so page views, direct traffic, or automated emails. Um, for ticket sales, we divided into two categories. So the number of tickets sold and the number of people who checked in with tickets, which is like the attendees. And um, while doing that, we also wanted to consider attrition rate. So that essentially is a follow-up point, meaning the number of people who bought, who paid for a ticket and didn't attend School of Data. And that ultimately ended up being about 15%. So 15% of people who bought a ticket didn't come to School of Data, which is actually quite amazing because it shows that people are willing to invest in the civic tech community and it's even more important because we did this literally a week or so before we shut down. So the fact that people were willing to congregate and share our collective love for civic tech was quite amazing. And then we also focused on like the week of most sales and like the top five most profitable days. And most of those really occurred during the week of the conference. There was literally a huge boom right before the event. 
Um, we also focused on marketing. So that mainly involved using Twitter. So we, you know, tracked, you know, tweets, you know, to our sponsors and from our sponsors. You know, and regarding the diversity, we looked at where the attendees came from. Was it New York City, New York State? You know, what about the world in the USA? Which I'll talk about momentarily. And then for demographics, we really focused on race and ethnicity as well as pronouns. And we broke down to two categories, registrants and attendees. For, this, for the sake of time, I'll only focus on attendees. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so who attended School of Data this year? So we've had people come from all around the world and roughly 80% of people came from New York City metro area, 97% of people from the USA, and three people from other countries around the world, which included Canada, you know, Mexico, Spain, Japan, and United Kingdom. Next slide, please. Okay, so this was one of um, two graphs that we focused on for this year's analysis. So it's just a breakdown of people who are white versus people of color who attended the event. It's certainly a start, you know, we're on the right track, um, but it is one of our important metrics. Next slide, please. And then this graph here, so you can see, is a comprehensive count and not a percentage breakdown of the various race ethnicities of people who attended the conference this year. Because we wanted to give people the option to choose more than one race and ethnicity. So in doing so, you can be counted or double counted in more than one category. So if I'm Asian, for instance, and Hispanic, I'm counted under the bar for Asian as well as the bar for Hispanic. Next slide, please. Okay, and just a quick summary for our pronouns, the majority of people identified as being female, which is something I'm very proud of. Next slide. And then this is just a screenshot from this year's you know, blog post. Um, which is currently up and we're very proud, you know, to have this blog post available and I can even post it in the link for you guys if you'd like. Um, and I just wanted to leave you at the end with this quote from the Dean of CUNY Law School, Mary Lou Bilek, who was truly amazing and CUNY Law School is where we hosted the event this year. Okay. Thank you guys. Oh. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, all right, thank you, Gabby. Next up is Shreja Taman, a computer science major at Queens College who is graduating this year. Shreja, you can take the floor. Hey, thank you. My internet just got caught off, sorry. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. My name is Sri Zanathaman and I'll be talking about 59 boards. I'm um, excited, please. Okay, Stephanie quite well already told you guys about community board. It is one of the most local government form of uh, uh, form of government in New York. There are 59 community boards throughout New York City, and each of these boards are charged uh, with community planning. They're, they held meetings every week or so and discuss uh, different agendas of land use, business permits, uh, liquor permits, and stuff like that. Next slide, please. Uh, the problem that we are facing is that these community boards are not recognized as entities that help increase the quality of life in the neighborhood. So most of the people in the community board does not even know that such entity exists and they are how they are working to better the community itself. And the website of these community boards are not up to date to the 21st century itself. Like if you go and check uh, into any one of them, you'll find the lag in the technical aspect of these boards. And uh, since these uh, uh, websites are not uh, Shree, it seems like we're having a uh, website. Oh. Okay. You guys can. Uh, 
Uh, is it clear now or is it the same? It's, uh, we, we, we can we hear, hear you now. Um, okay, all right, so let me just continue. So 59 boards uh, with application that combines the meeting of uh, all 59 boards in one place. You can just click around into the uh, board that you want, uh, the community board that you want, and it will show you all the meetings that are happening with its agenda. It'll, you, you'll also be able to subscribe to the event that you're in, interested in. Uh, this will just uh, help uh, you be aware of when the meetings are happening with the Next slide, please. So this is the part that I worked on with Z. It's a data scraping uh, part. Uh, the example on the right is a website of Community Board 1 Manhattan. And on the left, it's a Python code that scripts the text from the website and gets the title, date, time, location, and details of the um, uh, details found in the web page and extracts the data and puts it into a database. Next slide. Okay, and from the database, you can extract the data into a CSV file, which is then loaded into our web application to render it in a map. Next slide. Okay, this is a wireframe how the website uh, at a, as a finished product will look like. Uh, there will be a map, a number of CVs, and number of meetings with their location. And you, you can either choose the CV that you want and find meetings under that tab, or look at the whole 59 boards and the meetings. Next slide. Okay, so this is a prototype that we have right now. But Onis, can you click on the link a little bit on the bottom? Okay, so on the left you can see map, and if you click, like if you will be able to click on number of uh, community boards, and if you scroll down on the left side, you will be able to see the meetings for those community boards. And if you click on one of the, one of any of these meetings tab, then you'll be able to see the agendas that they will, that will be discussed in the meeting itself. And by looking at them, you can choose to subscribe to any of the events, which is not currently available, we're still working on it. Uh, you can go back to the slide and get the last link. Did we lose you? I think we Shree. lost Shree. Um, yeah. I can continue. Oh, she's back. I, I can continue on, on, on this slide. Um, Anej, can you um, exit um, back to oh. the main Google slide and represent? I think it exited out of the full screen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, next slide. Is it slide. the correct slide? Okay. Um, yeah, this slide. So, um, yeah, as uh, as Shri said, um, this is currently a prototype, and we're working on trying to um, really overhaul the central features of this application. So currently, we're only scraping um, only two community boards, but we're extending that to um, scrape other community boards. Um, again, um, community board formats are really crazy. Some of them are in PDF, um, so we want to kind of tailor each. Um, a central scraper to kind of like figure out how to best pull these events into the central database we're creating. Um, and hopefully 
this will increase engagement um, and provide an up-to-date tool for everyone to know when their local community board meetings are. Yep, and I think that's it. Awesome, so um, I'm gonna be talking about um, the other work we're, uh, we have been doing with community boards. So along with other work um, from um, our fellows showcased today, we have been also working with uh, community boards um, and supporting them directly. Next slide. Um, so so uh, community boards uh, largely lack the staff and skills to maintain a large, um, the large amount of technology data and documentation to officially execute their charter mandated responsibilities. So over the last two years, uh, we have um, Ramesh and Jennifer who are CIF alumni. Um, they have been working in CB1 um, and helping them out um, directly as apprentices. And um, last summer, we had two fellows work with CB7 um, and helping them digitize data um, into Airtable. We'll talk about that later. Um, and then this year we had um, a wonderful um, um, fellow directly work with CB8 um, and supplement many of the staff tasks in helping them improve documentation process. Um, next slide. Um, and with the COVID crisis, uh, we at Beta NYC specifically, Noel, Noel, Gabby, Marat have been also um, working to support the transition to remote operations. Um, we have gotten all the Manhattan community boards um, on Zoom and provided training and documentation to help their meetings go really, really smoothly. And currently we are also working with um, other community boards um, with their WebEx deployments and other processes. Next slide. And uh, one of these processes is um, using our CRM built on top of Airtable. Um, this is a community board database. Um, it helps community boards organize their data in an easy tabular format and also produce a lot of visualizations. So it enhances the community board's abilities to track voting, constituent issues, uh, land use, planning, budget, and other functions. All this work is hopefully leading to a more informed and engaged board and helps reduce the workload of district managers. Next slide. And another um, major project we're trying to work on um, during COVID is also working on building and improving community maintained resource guides and that fill in the gaps that Google and Yelp don't display um, certain information like food sites, special accommodation hours, outdoor seatings or protective measures at certain establishments or businesses. Um, as well as we want to kind of help community groups better understand of the health of their businesses. And then lastly, um, next slide. And lastly, we host many virtual events like this that bring awareness and discussion of issues um, and showcase awesome projects um, for the community and our fellowship and uh, help create knowledge on using open data. So I think uh, Kate will speak more about our upcoming events. Sure. First of all, great job, everyone. That was really great. Um, it's so awesome to hear the evolution of your projects um, and your communication skills. Um, so great job. Um, so uh, we're going to be hosting some more virtual events. Um, as some of you might know, I see some familiar uh, names in the participant uh, list. Um, our beta bagels have been a little bit on hold. Um, we're hoping to hold one with the Department of Health to talk about open public health data um, and answer anyone's burning questions about how public health data is, sort of flows from patient to um, uh, reporting. So um, if you're interested in that, um, look forward to that. We're hoping to do that soon. Um, and we are going to be also hosting an event. Um, our next beta talks will be about New York City's response to COVID. Um, and we have some uh, people lined up um, and if you know of any other people that are doing interesting projects, um, we'd love to hear about it. If they want to share a short lightning talk, um, let us know. My email is kate at bda.nyc. Um, and then we are still doing our open data classes. Um, we have one coming up with uh, our New York City Council staff. Um, so if you are a staff member for a council um, office, uh, look forward to that at the end of June. Um, and then we have a few others with uh, Manhattan Borough President's Office, the Community Board Leadership, 
um, event, um, and then we'll be doing some public ones, um, potentially with Brooklyn Chambers uh, Business Improvement Districts um, and whatnot. So that the show will go on. So stay tuned. Um, all of our classes and events will be listed on the meetup as usual. Um, yeah, back to you, Inez. You're on mute. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, everyone. That was great. Um, now we'd like to open up the conversation with the audience for discussion. Uh, if you are unable to speak up, you, as uh, I said before, you can just use the Q&A button at the bottom panel of your screen. Thank you. Anish, there are questions that are coming in. Um, okay. Let's see. Twyla and Mark, you may want to be a little bit more descriptive of the question of getting help with community councils. Is Twyla still, still here? Um, Twyla is one of our friends at the Manhattan Borough President's Office, and she's asked about help with community councils. Um, um, all right, I don't. Is Twilla still here? I see her here, but uh, Twilla, you're on mute. There's another question that came in. When can we expand the community board demographic analysis to Queens? The Queen. Great question. Good question. <laughs> um, let's do it. What uh, what community board should we do first? <laughs> so yeah, um, we're currently uh, working on um, figuring out how to kind of um, expand the methodology we applied to Manhattan to other um, boroughs. So yeah, Queens is on it's, it's on the to do list currently. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a resident of Queens, so I'd very much like to expand Queens, especially because Queens is uh, the most diverse borough, but the boards are not very diverse. So excellent question, John. Okay. I see. I see John. He just says CB7 <laughs> representing. So there was a follow up um, from Twilla um, and that, if you can see that, do you wanna respond to that? Community councils need outreach to augment in-person meetings. Many persons are unfamiliar with Zoom and other outreaches. Okay. Does anyone know what community councils are? I don't. Twyla, what are community councils? Hmm, okay. Twyla, can we unmute you? Do you wanna? Uh, is she talking about community boards? Hmm. Twyla, you have the capability of speaking now. Okay, I, uh, I did unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm, I have another uh, meeting at seven, but each precinct has a community council where people come uh, monthly except uh, in the summer. And of course now with the uh, social distancing and so forth, they, they need help in communicating. And um, of course this is rudimentary compared to the presentations you've all made and they were really impressive. I want to, uh, and, and humbling, I must say, I think awesome, it's great. Uh, but um, maybe I could talk to Emily and Kate. Um, oh, 
offline, uh, you know, or uh, they, they, the, the persons who run the community councils are volunteers as, you know, most persons in government service. And quite a few of them are older and they really don't have the uh, interactive skills that are needed to communicate. So I would just, like to brainstorm with you all sometime about ways in which uh, this great group or another uh, an incoming great group can help them. Great. Thank you, Twyla. Um, we love rudimentary projects, too. So <laughs> lower tech is good with us. I love you. Okay. And, and is that Kate? No, that, that's Emily, but yeah. Okay. I passed by your desk today, Emily. Oh, okay. That's great. Chase and I were there. Anyway, I, I have to take this other meeting, but uh, thank you for inviting me to these presentations. I want to come back in and uh, look at them again. You, you recorded this, right? Yes, it's being recorded. Thank you for joining us, Twyla. Thank, uh, Twyla, like Twilight. Twyla. Yes. That's My apologies. It. I got to jump. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, we have a few more questions coming in. Uh, one from Joelle. Any metro New York City analysis planned? Suburbs, uh, Westchester, Long Island, across the Hudson River, et cetera, with RPA. Who wants to take that one? Um. I don't know the answer, but my guess is that we're focused on the five boroughs for now. Or is somebody responding? I just saw a mouth moving. No? Okay. Um, uh, Noel, maybe you're there, but uh, I know that we're sort of focused on, we're in Manhattan now. Um, Beta NYC wants to expand our services and work to every borough um, with all the other borough presidents. So um, that's one of our aims. Uh, and looking at metro analysis, if it has to do with the five boroughs, um, which of course it does, uh, uh, that could happen, but yeah, bit by bit. Um, any other questions? And I just think we might be done with questions. Oh, one more. Okay, one more. Are community boards supporting this kind supporting this kind of open data support? This is from Joe Lamport. Some community boards are right now. Um, so some um, we we host uh, open data classes with community boards, and we do that through. Um, both working directly with them or with council members who um, fund um, digital inclusion and digital literacy um, through their discretionary funding. So we use that to bring that to community, to bring our open data classes to um, community boards and council. Um, so that is one aspect of the support. Okay, we're coming to a close. And if there are no more questions, uh, if there's no more final, oh, there is a final question uh, from James Tormey. Uh, Does the team working with community boards need any help? Uh, we are doing some interesting things with commissions with some of our city, 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 and may have some tech we can bring to the cause. I think there was a typo there. Um, James, send us an email um, and we will follow up. Um, oh, pretty, pretty I will put it. Um, and um, yeah, send us an email uh, and we'll follow up. Uh, it's seven o'clock uh, and I just wanna say thank you very much, uh, fellows. Uh, it's also the uh, time to clap for uh, uh, everybody clap. That time period, the, the special time period in, in across the whole metro area where everybody gets out and starts yelling and screaming. 
Um, I just want to conclude with a, a thank you fellows for one of the more unique years, uh, if not the most unique year to date. Uh, you came in all bright eyed, bushy tailed and accomplished in so many uh, respects and so many aspects. Uh, well, well, I know Emily and and I uh, and Kate were really excited to leverage every single one of your talents. And I think we did so uh, well and you exceeded any of our um, belief or like our preconceived notions of how amazing you would be this year. Um, and while we, uh, yeah, you, you kind of dealt with um, this level of uncertainty through COVID uh, in a really amazing way. Uh, and so, uh, thanks for sticking through it. Uh, thanks for cranking out these projects remotely. Uh, thanks for you know supporting each other uh, while while things seemed really really dark in March. Um, and um, thanks for supporting community boards. Um, uh, we don't want to let you go. It's so weird that we didn't even have a chance to like hug everybody and say goodbye and and have a going away lunch. But when we will be able to do so. Uh, we will have the largest one uh, to date. Um, so uh, thanks everybody for attending. Thanks, Anaj, for uh, emceeing. You are great. Um, these projects My are all great. Um, thanks, fellows. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, we hope to see you again for another beta talk. Yes. Yes, thank you all for tuning in and participating this evening, and good night. Good night. Everyone, Bye. say cheese. One, one picture. <laughs> oh, cheese. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait, let's do one more. <laughs> Don't think. <laughs>